So far, you have seen that you may formulate a linear programming problem, either minimization or maximization, and then solve the problem using graphical methods. And then you obtain one single optimal solution. But that is not always the case. So here we are going to look at some other special cases where you might have alternative solution, invisible solution, and later we'll see that a linear programming problem might also be unbounded. Let us recall that in the Giappetto and Dorian author problems, we only have one single solution, just one optimal point. However, there are other possibilities for other linear programming problems. For example, when we have alternative or multiple solutions, we have infinite number of solutions. So not only two, three, four, five, or six, seven, whatever, we have infinite number of solutions. The other special case is that we might have no optimal solution at all. This case, we call it invisible case. And then the next one, we call it unbounded problem. So this is an example of an LP problem where we have alternative optimal solutions. A company manufactures cars and trucks. Both product needs to be painted in a paint shop and needs to be assembled in a body assembly shop. And then the following sentences shows how much time a car spends in a paint shop, in body assembly shop, and so uh, also how much time a truck spend uh, in a paint shop and body assembly shop. It also says the contribution to the profit from truck and car. And finally, uh, the objective is to maximize the company's profit. Please pause the video to read this problem carefully. So let's start defining the objective function and decision variables. Sometimes I start from the objective function. The textbook says that you should start from the decision variables, but for me personally, sometimes it is easier to start from the objective function. You may do whichever you want to, but make sure that you have both correct and complete. Let me show you how I usually do this. So the last highlight says that we need to maximize the company profits. If you think about it, where does the profit comes from? Well, it comes from selling the truck, gives us 300 to the profit for each truck, and then 200 to the profit for each car. There are no other dollar signs in the problem, so the only things that go to the profits are only this, $300 from each truck and then $200 from each car. So just let's do that. Three here means 300, two here means 200. And then times x1, x2. So just put x1, x2. And then now you define what is x1, what is x2. So it is obvious from the sentence that x1 is each truck that we sell or produce because it is assumed here that whatever you produce, you can sell that. Okay. So here you say that x1 is the number of trucks produced daily, and then x2 is the number of cars produced daily. So that's how I start from objective function and then go back to decision variables to define the x1 and x2 in a very specific way. Number of trucks produced daily. So now let's look at the constraint. It is not very explicit in this problem. So it says that each vehicle must be processed in a paint shop and body assembly shop. If the paint shop were only painting trucks, then it can do 40 trucks per day to paint. And then if the paint shop were only painting cars, then 60 cars per day could be painted. So what is the constraint here? If you recall that this problem is talking about um, the daily production. That's why we also um, defined the decision variable in the previous slide, uh, the number of trucks and the number of cars produced daily. So everything in this problem is about a day. 
in that company. That's why it is obvious that the constraint is whatever you paint in the paint shop, whether it is shark, whether it is cars, you cannot use more than one day, right? Because we are talking about one daily um, schedule of the production. So whatever time, how much time you use in the paint shop, you cannot exceed one day. That's why the constraint one says that the fraction of day during which the paint shop is busy is less than or equal to one. In other words, whatever you do in the paint shop, whatever you paint, the total time you use for painting the products must not exceed one day. Okay, why just one day? Well, because this problem is only talking about the production schedule for for a single day. Okay, so this is how to do it. Let's say we're talking about cars. So if you just paint one car, you need one over 60 day, right? Because um, it says here, if you only paint cars all day long, then you can paint 60 cars per day, which means that one car consumes 1 over 60. If you have two cars, then you have uh, you spend 2 over 60 day, and then da, 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 if you have 60 cars, means that in total you spend 60 times 1 over 60, so it is one day. So it is exactly the same as the um, description, right? That's why we write it here 1 over 60 times x2. x2 is the number of cars that we produce daily. For the same reasoning, we say here it is 1 over 40 times x1. Because if we were only painting trucks, then we can finish 40 trucks per day. Which, which means that one truck spends 1 over 40 day. The sum of this, uh, the time we spend for painting trucks, plus the time we spend for painting cars, must not exceed 1. Let's take a look at the body shop. It says that if the body shop were only producing cars, then it, will, it could process 50 cars per day. So if it is only assembling cars, then it can finish 50 cars per day, which means that one car spends one over 50 day, right? Two cars will spend two over 50 day. And then the, the, that, if we have 50 cars here, then in total we will have 50 times one over 50 means we spend the entire day. So here for cars, um, it spends one over 50 day in the body shop. For truck, it also, each truck also spend one over 50 per truck. So the total of both cars and trucks, again, must not exceed one day. So we've got the objective function, decision variable definitions, constraints, and last but not least, always do not forget to add the sign restrictions. And then to find the optimal solution, we draw the isoprofit line. We choose any feasible point. Here we choose 20.0. And then because this is a maximization problem, we will drag this line in parallel to that direction because we want to maximize the profit. But if you keep dragging this line to that direction, finally you will hit this line segment, E and A. Previously in the Giappetto and Dorian auto problem, you will hit just one single maximum point. Here you notice the difference that uh, you, you notice the difference that you hit a line segment from E to A instead of just one single point. What does it mean? It means that all points in the AE line segment from A 
40.0 to E20.40, they are all optimal points. Which means we have infinite number of points, right? Because there are infinite number of points in a line. So yes, A is just one point, E is just one point, but the line connecting E and A, or A to E, it contains infinite number of points. So whatever point you choose along the AE line segment, it will have the same Z equals 120. That's why we call this problem having alternative or multiple optimal solutions. So you may wonder if there is a simple way to define a point in the AE line segment. The answer is yes, there is. So if you want to find a point, let's say J, in the AE line segment, what you can do is that first you take both extreme points, A is 40.0, and then E is uh, 20.30. Then you multiply the first point with C, the second point with 1 minus C. But then remember, C must be between 0 and 1, including 0, including 1. Let's say you take C equals 4 over 5, and then you will get the point J equals X1 equals 36, X2 equals to 6. You may try different values of C, and then you will see that um, you get the point along the AE line segment. You may try 1 half, 3 over 7, uh, 12 over 31, 0, 1, and so on. Now, here's the other example where we call it an infeasible linear programming. It has empty visible region. So from the previous problem, if we add these two constraints, now we don't have any feasible region at all because there are is no intersection among all the um, allowable region of the constraints. So we don't have any feasible solution, which means that obviously we don't have any optimal solution as well. Now let me check your understanding with this question. An LP problem can have zero, one, or two optimal solutions. Is it true? Or false? I will give you the answer after the pause of the video. So you may pause the video and think about the answer. So the answer is false. Because an LP with alternative or multiple solutions not only have two optimal solutions, but it actually have infinite number of optimal solutions.